Hi, so it's been a while since I made a video and it's also been a while since my last haircut. But yeah, so I figured I would just do a basic life update. I haven't really been doing much that's video worthy. I mean, I did a couple projects here and there, but I just didn't bother to really actually make it into a video. So one of the things I did do is I did upgrade my shed solar setup. So if you remember from previous videos, I did set up 400 watts of solar on top of the shed and then I ran that inside and I had a 350 watt inverter and a small battery. That battery eventually died at some point and then I just put like an ATV battery. It was basically enough to run the lights but not more than that. What I ended up doing is I did upgrade the battery system. So I got four 6 volt 230 amp hour batteries in series and I also updated the uh, inverter to a 3000 watt inverter and everything is running at 24 volts. The charge controller does 12 or 24, so I kept that. Yeah, so long story short, I did redo the whole solar setup. So you can see here, I did a battery box. Eventually, I want to put a heater in there too, just to keep the batteries warm in winter. But again, that's not too big of a deal as long as I don't discharge them completely. The other thing I did is I mounted everything on the wall. So I made like this nice panel painted white and then added electrical panel as well. And I even added breakers and fuses and stuff like that because the other setup didn't have any of that safety first, right? And another thing I did is I also ran a circuit to the house. So there's also a new electrical panel in the house, which is solar from the shed. So the idea is that I want to have outlets throughout the house so that I can have backup power. And maybe eventually I want to automate switching certain loads to solar power. So like when I'm producing a lot of power, I could probably have like a relay that goes off and it switches loads over. I still need to figure out the best way of doing that, but that's kind of the end goal. Cause I got 400 watts of solar, which is not much. And like in the winter months, which is like most of the time here, I'm not producing even close to 400 watts, but in the summer months, the days are very long. So I'm actually producing like a lot of power. So I could save a bit of my hydro bill there if I start to divert loads over. It's not a grid tie system. I didn't really want to mess with that because then you have to get into permits and all that crap. So this is not a grid tie system at all. It's strictly separate. So yeah, so I had a little bit of fun there digging that trench. I didn't go as deep as I probably should have, but the soil here is like very hard to dig. It's almost like rock. Like it's, it's basically clay. So it's like you're sticking the shovel in there. You're just kind of scratching little section at a time like it's, it's very hard to take so I didn't bother going that far now another project I had made videos of at least last year was it the year before I lost track I think it was last year I had started on the garage and then the project kind of stalled because I got sidetracked with the solar stuff and just other stuff in general but I did epoxy the floor so at least there's that and I started the framing, but I didn't really get that far. So I was working all over the place, really. Like one day I would maybe work a bit on the garage, the other day on the solar. So I didn't make videos of any of that stuff. But anyway, I'm kind of getting on a tangent here. The reason I'm making this video is I want to talk about buying property. So last year I went to see this property and it was pretty nice. Like there was even a camper that came with it. There was like at least two sections that were opened up. It was over 100 acres. I think it was like 160, but I don't remember. The price was within the range it could afford, but a little bit on the high side. So I kind of hesitated. And I found this was often a theme is I would hesitate too long and then it would sell. And then not long after that, the whole human malware stuff started to happen. And then with people working from home, especially like down south where like the housing prices are like insane. A lot of people start to move here or a lot of investors and speculators and stuff started to buy up properties here. So I started to become a little bit discouraged because it was getting really hard to even find properties here. Yes, I found the market got so crazy that properties were selling like within an hour of being listed, sometimes even before. So like I realized that the only way I can actually buy one of these properties is if I just put an offer without going to see it. And another thing I noticed too is that the prices were going up fast. So I didn't want to wait because I know that if I waited too long, like eventually I wouldn't be able to afford property like this anymore. So I want to buy like as soon as possible. Because like for example, like that property I went to look at that was like over 100 acres 
properties like that now, like today, are selling for like over a hundred grand. And like when I went to see that one, it was selling for like, I think around like 60 to 70 grand. So like in just like one year, like the properties have been going out by like a lot. So this summer, 2021, I started to look a bit more seriously and start to get more serious about trying to find a property. So there was one property I went to look at and it was actually riverfront. It was only a couple acres and it was actually pretty nice, but it was kind of narrow and long. And then from the property to the river, it was actually crown land. So it wasn't land that I owned. So I can't build anything on that section, but crown land, you do have some things you're allowed to do. Like I can still put a dock and stuff like that. And then I still owned everything up to the road. So. You know, it was a decent one. I went to look at it and I was really thinking about it because there was just nothing on the market. But it was so far, it was like two hours away. So I decided to wait and see if something better comes up. And I was really starting to get this courage because there was just nothing. It's like the investors are just buying up everything and it's just crazy. Like you see a property and then it sells within a couple hours. So at one point, I decided to get myself set up with a realtor to see if maybe they can give me access to more properties, like maybe properties that I, I'm not actually seeing on the listings because maybe they can get them to me before they get listed or whatever. So I figured I could get a bit more of an inside scoop of the real estate market. Yeah, so they basically set me up with a site that showed properties that kind of meet what I want. And I was basically just hitting refresh all the time. And then Finally, something came out that was really interesting. It was about 40 acres. It was unorganized township. That's like the number one priority for me because an unorganized township, you don't need permits to build and the taxes are very low and there's like no bylaws. So you don't have Karens complaining about stuff and then telling you you can't do something and then bylaw officers coming and telling you to tear stuff down. Like there's none of that in unorganized township, which is nice. Like I want as much freedom as possible so basically this property like checked all the boxes and it had like road access it didn't have waterfront though but i kind of gave up on that because i realized i'm not gonna find anything in my price range that's waterfront so long story short i called the realtor and this is what i'm going to see it and i decided to put an offer one of the conditions i set was that i actually want to go see it so it's kind of like when you buy a house you put the offer in but you have conditions and one of those conditions is usually to have an inspection. So this is kind of the same idea. So I went to see it the next day and I really liked it. And I gave it some thought, but I didn't want to wait too long again because it might just get bought from under me. So long story short, this happened. So I totally bought it. I still can't believe it that I actually own 40 acres of land. And this property is about an hour from where I live. So it's still far, but it's not like super far, like that riverfront one. So it's doable. Like I don't go there for nothing because it costs a lot in gas. So I haven't actually been out to it much, but I still need to kind of go explore it and decide where I want to build. And I'm probably going to hire a company to kind of clear a small area, like make a little road. Because I mean, I have 40 acres, so I may as well build like far enough into the property instead of like right at the start. But there is an opening already, which is nice. So it does give me like a place to park and stuff like that. So as is, like it's already usable. Like there's even a culvert in the ground and everything. So that's nice because trying to get an entrance built, even though you're in an unorganized township, there's still some regulations when it comes to stuff like that. So it can be uh, tough to deal with that. So at least I already have an open area, like an opening, like a driveway basically. So I don't have to worry about that. The property is pretty much all like pine trees. There's a bit of poplar and birch. And there's some areas that are a little bit open already. Like I haven't explored it that much, but it looks like it has a lot of potential. So the nice thing too, it's actually not that far from a lake. So if I still want to go swimming or boating and stuff like that or fishing, like I'm not that far from the property. So now the goal of this property is to eventually live off grid. But for now, like I just want to make it into like a campground, like a place to go camping and a place to kind of go hang out and it's gonna retreat to get out of the city. I mean, I don't live in a huge city, but it's still nice to just get out and be in nature. And I also don't like the direction that society is going. Like it's like, 
especially like it's kind of funny because I made my video last time in 2020 talking about how I didn't like how the economy was going and all that. And that was right before the human malware hit. And now that the human malware has hit, it's like, I can really see, like society is going downhill. Like it's bad. Like it's like just the government, you know, like being overreaching with all the policies and all the new rules now. Like it's, I mean, it feels like we're like in some kind of dystopia and then they're announcing the agenda 2030 and the great reset and you will own nothing and you'll be happy. Like they're trying to get rid of the idea of land ownership and trying to control us. Like even our tech does control us. Like phones are anti-user, like they spy on us. Everything is going subscription based. Like I don't know, just everything is just going crazy. Like the whole aspect of society, humanity as a whole, like I just find everything is just going downhill. Like there's just so much corruption in the system and all that. So I do want to get to a point where I can be self-sufficient and live off grid. I mean, you can't really escape all of that 100%. Probably still gonna want to go to the store to buy stuff. I'm probably still gonna want to buy stuff online or even have internet. Like I'm not looking at being like a hermit that has zero connections to the world. I mean, as much as that is kind of nice to be disconnected. I don't know if I could actually be disconnected that much. I still want to kind of have communication with the outside world, but at the same time, I think it'll feel better if I know that I'm in my own little cabin in the woods and just far away from general public. Like, especially when it comes to stuff like vaccine mandates. I mean, I'm vaccinated, but I still don't like the idea that they're forcing the vaccine. And if you don't take it, you're basically cut off from like a good part of society and then you don't have a job. Like, I mean, what else are they gonna mandate in the future? So I don't want to be dependent on the system where they could just force stuff on me. Like, it's just, I really don't like the way things are going. And now they're talking about like digital IDs. So like, to me, all this is basically going to end up being like a social credit system and all that. Like, long story short, Canada is going downhill. Like, I really, not just Canada, but the whole world as a whole. Like, it's kind of scary to see where things are going. So I really want to try to separate myself as much as possible from the world. Or at very least, I want to have a backup plan. So even if I decide I don't want to live off grid, I at least want to have the ability to. So like once I start to build something, I want to make it where it's possible to live there. So yeah, so I own 40 acres now. Like I just, I can't believe it. And sometimes I even forget that I own it. It's like, because I'm still busy with a lot of projects here and stuff like that. I still have to work and all that stuff, right? So like I'm, I'm far from the point where I can actually live off grid still a dream at this point. So sometimes I forget, it's like, wait, I still own that land now. It's like, it's like, it's just crazy. So I'm hoping to start building or at least planning out a building area by next year. <coughs> yeah, so I might go in this year, we'll see. But I might actually bring you along and show you the property. But yeah, this is pretty much it for this video. So I just want to announce the fact that I bought a property and I'm pretty excited about that. And yeah, that's pretty much it. So have a good one, bye.